Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Tame and On One Photo Raw 2021, and I haven't said that in a little while. Uh, on One came out with uh, No Noise. I did a few videos about that, and then I got into a bunch of other things. I wanted to circle back around because I have not forgotten about On One. I love it. Photo Raw is fantastic. The masking is, honestly, I just, the masking is so good. That's um, maybe the best part of it. I don't know. There's a lot of great things about On One. The masking is definitely high on my list. Let me show you a photo and I'll show you kind of how I'm masking something that I consider fairly complicated and you just do it like that. So here's my photo. If I hit the backslash key, that's how it started. And I did a few things here in the tone and color section of develop and you can also see that some lens correction was applied. It was a blue hour in Amsterdam and all I wanna do is go into effects, mask in a few things just to give it a little extra punch. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with add filter and I'm gonna add HDR look. And the first thing I wanna do is just basically mask this into the buildings and not put HDR look anywhere else. And so go into masking and I'm gonna get AI quick mask, which is honestly, I, I don't know how they thought of this or uh, frankly, I don't know how the technology was developed, but boom, it just is kind of a mind blower to be honest. So it allows you to just highlight over areas that you wanna drop which is the negative, as you can see here. It also says drop right there. And then you can go in and choose areas that you wanna keep, and that will be um, a plus sign. So first we're gonna start with drop. So I'm gonna say drop, which basically means don't put any of the adjustment that I'm doing here with HDR look into the area that I'm highlighting in red. So you don't have to cover it all. You just kinda of gotta give it some information. And so sometimes I go a little bit slower um, if I'm doing it on my own and not recording a video, but you don't have to get super detailed with it. It is intelligent, it is AI, so it's figuring out what you're talking about. And now that I've changed to keep, I'm gonna come in here and you can see that it's gonna paint it in, in green. And so all I'm saying is, hey, keep this HDR look in this green area, which as you can see is basically the skyline and whatnot, uh, and then drop it from the rest, which is the water. Uh, and the sky because I don't want any crunchiness in those areas. Sometimes I come back and just drop another point or two in certain areas. But like I said, you don't have to be exact. It's amazing. You just hit apply, it figures it out, and then it'll uh, build that mask for you. Let's take a look. And boom, just like that. I mean, that's pretty much it. Now you can see that there's little areas here where I could refine the mask and you can do that. You can go keep again and drop again and then hit apply. I'm actually okay with that because as a viewer, you're not really gonna notice so much that those little areas, like along the bottom of the boat here and the bottom of the dock and all that, you're not gonna really notice that they're not really having that um, applied to it so much. So again, you can refine if you want to. For purposes of this video, I'm gonna say done. And all that's done is basically created a mask. Let me click view. There's my mask. I mean, if you look at the edges of the buildings and all that, it really figured it out really well. Now you can come in here with things like these levels and you can just uh, tighten things up. You see how I'm dragging that? It's kind of a contracting or expanding the mask. So you can kind of fiddle around with these things. In fact, I'm gonna go like that because that's a nice crisp edge along the tops of those buildings. But that allows you to further refine it if you want to. Bottom line, it took me, I don't know, four or five seconds to basically apply HDR look just to the specific parts of the building. Uh, buildings and not anywhere else just like that because of AI quick mask. So now I'm going to leave uh, the default settings which is compression of 100 and detail of 20 but if I turn this off and you look at those buildings you can see they're, they're a little bit darker a little bit less crisp and now when I turn this back on they've had that applied to them so they look pretty good. Now one of the other great things is, of course is you can copy and paste mask. I'm going to use this mask a couple more times. So I'm going to click copy. I'm going to add a new filter dynamic contrast and this time I don't have to mask it. I just come over here and say paste. And that same mask has been applied. And by the way, I can close this to get out of masking. I'm gonna use the default figures here as well, which is medium of 15 and large of 20. But once again, I've isolated that area because I just pasted the mask. So it's instantaneous. And you know, I've, there it is without it. And there it is with it, a little bit crunchier. So, and honestly, if I wasn't sitting here talking to you, that was maybe, 15 seconds of work. I've got two filters with perfect masking applied and ready to go. So we're talking about speedy, speedy stuff. And I'm gonna actually go get dynamic contrast again. I'm gonna paste that same mask, but this time I'm going to invert it. So if you look at my mask, remember in masking, black conceals and white reveals. So in the other ones, the buildings were all white, which means the edits were gonna be revealed there. 
and the sky and the water were black, which means the edits were going to be concealed there. Well, now it's the opposite. I'm concealing what I'm about to do across the buildings, and I'm going to reveal it in the white or show it, right? So, and what I'm going to do, if you've been here before, you probably know this, is just kind of go negative, well, not kind of, but I'm going to go negative across all three, small, medium, and large, uh, here in dynamic contrast, because that's a great way to really soften up the photo, and I think that does a nice job of kind of creating that smooth kind of look in the sky and water, which I like quite a bit. So that's a quick, easy way to do that. Just recycle that mask, invert it, and boom, you're off and running. Okay, now what I want to do is uh, wrap this up with a little bit of color. So I'm going to click Add Filter, and I'm going to choose Color Balance. And I'm going to use a hue of about 13, which is kind of, not kind of, it is kind of in the reddish, pinkish kind of realm. And then the amount, I'm going to do like a 35 or something like that. And as you can see, I'm adding this color. As you can see there, it's kind of a pinkish hue. Uh, in the amount of 35, I'm in highlight, so keep that in mind. What I'm trying to do is create a little bit more subtle kind of sunset look to the photo. It was definitely blue hour, but basically by doing this, I'm putting a little bit of pink color in the bright parts of the photo, which of course is the, uh, the highlights. And so if I turn this off, if you look at that before, especially up here in the sky where you can see it fairly large, there it is before and there it is after. It's picked up just a little bit of color, which I think is a nice little bit addition to it. And I'm gonna do one more move to kind of accentuate that and wrap this thing up. That last move is to use Photo Filter, uh, which is right there. And I'm gonna pick a hue way over here, about a 25. And the amount, I'm gonna use about a 15. And so that's applying across the entire photo, but I don't want it across the entire photo. I just really want it in the bright parts. That's where luminosity masking comes in. So I'm gonna come in this time and just build a luminosity mask, and it builds it automatically. So if I show that to you, there it is, a black and white representation of the mask. So a luminosity mask, if you're not familiar, is a, a mask based on light values. So uh, this is basically applying the edit more heavily in the brighter parts and less heavily or not at all in the darker parts. So if it's completely black, it's getting nothing. If it's completely white, it gets all of it. And the gray is kind of the shades of gray, the varying. The darker gray gets less, the lighter gray gets more. Now the nice thing is, just like with the other tool, you can come in and customize things. So you might move levels around a little bit, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm gonna just going to slide this a little bit, and what I'm trying to do is concentrate the uh, application of this tool, this photo filter, um, onto just more specifically the highlights. In other words, I'm trying to get rid of more of the gray. Uh, and so that's what I've done. This levels allows me to do that. You can see like that, there's a lot more kind of mid to darker gray in the water. And as I drag this to the right, it becomes more black. So that section of the water, especially that over on the left-hand side, is getting less and less and pretty, pretty much almost none of that edit here. And so what I've done now, re remove the masking view and back in the uh, regular view of the photo. I'm going to, in fact, close the masking menu. And there you go. So I was able to take photo filter really quickly with the luminosity mask and stick it on. And if you couple that with color balance, you can see there it is without either of them. And then when I added color balance, got a little bit of color there. And then when I added photo filter, it really brought it up quite a bit. But now that I see that, I think I'm going to change the hue slightly. And I think I'm going to drop the amount slightly as well. I don't want to overdo it. Actually, I think I'm going to go back on the hue. I think I liked it a little bit more toward the red, but I like the amount a little bit lower. So I think maybe like a 12. I don't know. Experiment, season to taste, that sort of thing. All I really wanted to do is not like fake a sunset, but basically just get a little bit more color in that area so that it wasn't just kind of an empty kind of white, right? I wanted to have a little bit of that twilight kind of happy light that I like, basically. Um, and that's how you do it. So it's quick and easy and powerful, and it's really just a few quick things with AI Quick Mask, and then copying and pasting, and sometimes inverting mask, and then you know with uh, with this one, luminosity mask and photo filter. I mean, I'm, honestly, it's like instantaneously your mask is done, and you just go apply your edits, and uh, you're ready to go. So if I turn off my edits, that's what my photo looked like before. And for me, shooting at that time of day, that's a pretty typical photo, right? Foreground's a little bit dark, sometimes the subject is kind of dark, and the sky is bright. Makes sense, right? Uh, the, the sky's gonna be a little bit brighter. And so, 
because um, that's where the light is, right? So that's kind of how it looked. Well, not kind of, that is how it looked. Um, that's how it looks now. So I gave it a bit more of a sunset feel overall. And I actually think now I'm gonna come in here to photo filter. And the other thing you can do is, you might like the amount and the hue, but if you still think it's a little bit too much, which I do now that I've had it turned off, you can just come in here with opacity and pull that down. And so basically I'm just reducing the intensity of that photo filter a little bit more with the opacity slider. So I'm bringing that down to 70. I think I like that a little bit better. So that's how I would handle that one. And one more time, the before and after. There we go, before, unedited, and then after with a few couple things in the develop, you know, tone and color section on the, on the first tab, but then five quick filters with some super easy AI, AI quick mask and luminosity mask. Boom, you're done, ready to go. That's it, my friends. The power of masking in on one. Honestly, just fantastic, amazing. I love it. Thanks for watching. If you don't have it, check it out at the link down below. Plenty of videos here about it, and I'll be doing more. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you soon, my friends. You take care of yourselves, and adios.